How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be diving deep into something that you might not expect to be one of the biggest challenges facing humans returning to the moon and that is moon dust. Yep, you heard me right. It's not aliens and it's not the lack of oxygen on the moon. It is dust. You know how sand gets everywhere when you go to the beach? Anakin does. Well just imagine that but much worse. Moon dust is like the glitter of the cosmos, only a little bit more dangerous. Well, it's a lot more dangerous. So let's get into why this stuff is such a big deal, some history behind it, the current problems, and what we are going to do to solve them. Let's get into it. First, let's go back to the Apollo missions. When astronauts first visited the moon in the late 60s and early 70s, they quickly realized moon dust was more than just an inconvenience, it was a serious problem. They described it as being like talcum powder, super fine, but incredibly sharp. And it wasn't just annoying, it was sticking to everything, clogging equipment, scratching visors, and even causing damage to the astronauts' spacesuits. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, after only a few hours on the lunar surface, were completely covered in the stuff. It got inside the lunar lander as well. They said it smelt like gunpowder, and the and it caused them to have something called lunar hay fever, making it very hard for the astronauts to breathe. So yeah, moon dust was very unexpected, but an extremely real threat. Okay, so what makes moon dust such a pain? Well, it turns out the moon doesn't have an atmosphere like on Earth. So over millions of years, meteorites have been smashing into the surface, pulverizing rock into an incredibly fine dust. But here's the kicker. It's not smooth like here on Earth. These particles are jagged and sharp, like tiny shards of glass. Imagine a ti tiny little knives clinging to everything. And because there's no wind or water on the moon, the dust just sits there, untouched, waiting to be kicked up by boots, rovers, and landers. Plus, the lack of an atmosphere also means that the moon's surface is exposed to the sun's ultraviolet radiation, which makes the dust electrically charged that's right it's electrically charged like static electricity that means the dust actually sticks to everything it comes in contact with the spacesuits the mechanics of the orbiters their visors everything and it sucks it's not easy to get off either now here's why moon dust is more than just an annoyance first off it can damage equipment if it gets inside the seals of the spacesuit, it can cause them to break or even lose pressure. It can also scratch up visors, making it hard for the astronauts to see. Can you imagine trying to explore the moon with a scratched up helmet visor? That's not going to end well. Plus, if moon dust gets into the joints of a spacesuit, it can cause them to become stiff and stop working altogether. Think about how hard it would be to move around in a stiff spacesuit. Then there's the health risk. Moon dust can cause respiratory issues if it's inhaled, and the sharp particles can potentially damage lung tissue. Some astronauts during the Apollo missions reported sneezing and watery eyes, calling it lunar hay fever. If you're talking about long-term lunar missions or even colonization, having dust floating around in your inhabitable areas could seriously be bad news. It's like a permanent allergy attack, but it's like microscopic knives instead. So how are we planning to deal with this dust menace? NASA and the space agencies are well aware of moon dust problem and are working on the solution. One potential fix is developing better materials for spacesuits, new designs that can resist moon dust sticking to them or even shake off the dust 
when they're using it with electronic fields. Pretty wild, right? Spacesuits that can zap or repel away lunar dust is something straight out of science fiction, but they're working on that technology. Another approach to this would be better habitation designs. Future lunar bases will likely have airlocks and special cleaning chambers where astronauts can blow the dust off their suits before entering. We might also see the use of robots of some kind exploring the lunar surface, reducing the number of humans who actually have to go out and interact with the lunar surface. There's also the idea of using magnetic or electronic fields to repel dust from landers and equipment. It's kind of like giving the moon base a force field to keep uh, this nasty moon dust at bay. We've even seen this kind of technology tested in space before, so it's not too far-fetched to imagine this working on the moon. Why is it so important for the future of space exploration. Well, when we think about colonizing the moon, we're not just talking about a weekend trip here. We're talking about people living and working on the moon for months and possibly years. And if moon dust is a constant threat, damaging equipment, harming human health, and give <clears throat> and getting into every nook and cranny, it could seriously slow down all of the progress. We can't have astronauts spending all their time cleaning dust off stuff, right? That's not exactly groundbreaking visions of what men should be doing when they're on the moon. The exciting part is that solving the moon dust problem isn't just about the moon. The techniques and technologies we develop to tackle this issue can be used on Mars or planetary bodies in the future. So, figuring out how to deal with moon dust is a critical step into further visions of human exploration into outer space and further colonizing other worlds. We can't ignore it, we must solve the problem, and I think we will. So what do you think? Will we conquer the challenge of moon dust and finally make it back to the moon and make it our permanent home? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to stay up to date with more space exploration content, don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button. Together we can keep exploring the stars. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.